Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. Parents, I'm here to tell you that it's okay to be a messy parent. Hey, I'm a mom of four. I'm a messy parent and it's okay to be a mess. It is impossible not to be a messy parent. And the more you try to be a perfect parent, the more mess you're going to actually make and the more frustrated you'll become. So to sort of manage this messiness, which is kind of what we're trying to do as well as parents, we need to give ourselves permission to be a mess. And in fact, this is so important that this is actually the second podcast that I'm doing on messy parenting. We know this podcast is called Cleaning Up the Mental Mess, but I really specifically want to bring it down to messy parenting because, listen, it's so hard to be a parent. It's great, but it's hard. And that's why I'm bringing out this book this year as well on the, on the 8th of August called How to Help Your Child Clean Up Their Mental Mess. So as we are cleaning up our mess and helping our children clean up their mess, we make a lot of messiness along the way. And it's okay. We need to normalize and celebrate being messy parents. And in that way, when we've got this honesty and authenticity about saying, hey, listen, I messed up here. I, I don't know how to fix this or I did this or I did that, that immediately empowers you to actually now look at how can you manage the mess instead of going into a guilt and shame spiral, which can so easily happen. So I encourage you to listen to the first episode I did on this. And then I'm going to use a great example from one of my favorite TV shows. And I'm sure it's probably yours as well. And if you haven't yet watched it, I recommend you do. And that is Ted Lasso. And the latest episode came out this week. And so it just came out just recently. And so I'm going to be talking about the latest episode and specifically at the end of the of the episode, Ted has a very moving discussion with his mom, which really highlights this messiness of parents and how we need to normalize and how we need to recognize that, you know, what we do as parents does impact our children. But if we can actually own the mess and accept the mess and validate our messiness and give ourselves permission to be messy, we have a way of managing it. We can then together collaborative, collaboratively with our children and our spouses and so on and our partners work out ways through the messiness. But if we deny the mess, it leads to years potentially of bad relationships forming or people being affected or our children being affected. But owning the messiness frees us from that. So the latest episode of Ted Lasso and it's towards the end. And I'm just going to kind of set the scenario for you. And then I've and I've an, analyzed their conversation to use this as a great example. So Ted has a beautiful, messy moment with his mom that shows some key things about the impact of his childhood, what happened to him as in, in his childhood, and how it affected him as an adult. Now, for those of you that know the show and that don't know the show, Ted is just one of the kindest people, portrayed as this, he's a football coach and just incredible with other people, how he tunes in and just has so much incredible wisdom and is immersed in kindness. But you can see he's really battling with stuff. He's divorced from his wife and his young son lives in the States and he's in the UK running this football team, this um, soccer uh, soccer club. He's the main coach at at the soccer club. And he is really battling with, you know, with the fact that he's that he's divorced and that his child is missing him. And then there's a lot of other stuff. And it all just comes pouring out in different ways throughout the whole series. I mean, there's just so many beautiful life lessons to learn from Ted Lasso. But it's really interesting what happens in this particular episode because you can see as you watch the different seasons how it's building, how he's really wrestling with stuff and he's going to the ther- he's you know, he sees a therapist that the club provides and that's really helping him work through stuff and work through the divorce and so on. But it's as as you'll see now. I'm going to outline for those of you that haven't seen it, or if I, if this is a spoiler alert and you want to go watch it first and then come back and listen, go ahead. Otherwise, you know, maybe listen and then go watch the episode and just look for these things and see what else you can get out of it. Obviously, it's not exhaustive what I'm doing, but it's certainly good. I think give it, give us some examples of what it means to be a messy parent and to validate that. Ted has this beautiful, messy moment with his mom that shows some key things about the impact of his childhood on him as an adult, her battle with what happened and how she didn't know how to manage it, and the impact that her not being able to manage what happened in their life, how that impacted Ted, and this 
And then also we see the torment that Ted lives under knowing his son misses him. It, and it lets us explore this messiness and how they begin to resolve this messiness between the two of them. Ted gets back from a, from a, a game. They've just won and he's all excited. And his mom has just had arrived to stay for a couple of days. And she had stayed back that uh, when he was at the match to cook him a favorite dinner. And he had two favorite dinners and she welcomes him in and says, hey, Ted, I've made two of your favorite meals. And I'm just paraphrasing, but that's kind of the scenario. And she's laid the table beautifully and she's got his favorite meatloaf and favorite lasagna and couldn't decide which to make. So she made both. Both. So we're seeing a real mom moment in action over there. Typical kind of excitement to, you know, spoil her grown up son with his favorite foods from when he was a child. And then he walks in the door and he's got a really sad, pensive like look on his face. And instead of being all happy and bouncy and, you know, Ted's always kind of happy and bouncy and cracking jokes and the like, you know, being sort of supporting and uplifting others and so focused on helping others that, you know, it's taken him a while to learn to focus on his own stuff. Anyway, so his mom's all bright and chirpy, but he's not. And he comes to the door of the kitchen and he says, Mom, what's wrong? Why are you here? And she replies, what do you mean, Ted? I, I mean, I, I came to visit you. I want to see you. I miss you. Something along those lines. I'm paraphrasing, okay? And then he answers, I mean... Mom, if you have got something to say to me, I would really appreciate it if you just went ahead and said it. So Ted is identifying something unspoken that hasn't just happened in this visit of, with her coming to him. It's much bigger than that. There's something that's been unsaid in their lives that has just been kind of suppressed and pushed aside and eventually it's reached a point where it's exploded. Our experiences are like volcanoes. You've heard me explain that before. And eventually they will explode. They bubble and bubble and bubble under the surface and eventually explode. Okay, so whatever's happened, she pretended that everything was okay. So something major happened in their life. At this point, we don't quite know what it is. But he's alluding to something. And she basically pretended everything was okay. Always a smiley, chirpy, happy mom trying to, uh, uh, obviously trying to make up for whatever the big thing was that happened. So it was kind of her, her coping mechanism, mechanism, sorry, her coping mechanism for the trauma was to pretend it didn't happen. This is the messiness of how she copes. And that's okay. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? It's okay. That's the mess that she felt. What she went through was messy. But what she needed was some help to be able to manage that mess because her coping mechanism was maybe what she could do in the moment, but it wasn't something that was sustainable. It's like when my dad died. I remember the shock was so huge that I actually had a hair appointment and I went to this hair appointment and pretended that nothing had happened. That was my coping mechanism in the moment, but I didn't stay there. I had to come back and I came back and I chose to process it. But I could have pretended that it didn't happen and try to not deal with the emotions that I was feeling because they were so overwhelming. And, you know, that's an extreme example, but that can happen. And this is, let's, let's see what happens. So... She pretended it does, didn't happen and she kind of glosses over and possibly has for Ted's formative years growing up over the deep impactful stuff that hurts so much, that has hurt so much, something that happened that really was impactful and hurt so much. But Ted has reached a point where the volcano has exploded and him seeing his mom at this time when she came to visit him kind of just... Made the, uh, finally the, the, the volcano exploded. Tim, Ted has enough and he says, Mom, thank you for cooking dinner. And he means it. He's genuine. He's kind. He's appreciative. And that's great. Thank you for cooking both of those, the lasagna and the meatloaf. But, and then he does say a little swear word, you didn't want to talk. So, mm-hmm, for not wanting to talk. Was such a weighty statement. Thank you for the things you do for me. I really appreciate them. I know that you're trying to help me and protect me. I'm just putting the, the, the information behind to show the messiness. But he's actually angry with her and, and, and says a swear word for, try, for not talking. In other words, the not talking, that messiness, which was okay maybe for a moment but not for such so many years, he's, for not wanting to talk is the messiness. Now, it's okay to be a mess and there's a mess going on here. But let's look at the impact of the mess when we don't manage our mess. Mom replies, excuse me. She's kind of confused because, you know, she's just, she's so used to pretending. 
And Ted answers, thank you for flying all the way here to come and see me. And he means that. But, and once again swears, something at you, you know, says a swear word, for not telling me you were coming. Now why did you just turn up? It's, it's, there's all this hidden meaning, there's all the nuance behind the smiley faces and the meatloaf and the lasagna and the jokes and the connection with his, his whole team and all these nice things that are genuine and real and that he loves and appreciates about her, but there's something underneath and it's not being spoken about and he can't handle it anymore. This highlights the unsaid things that cover many years and that, that have, as I said, been bubbling like a volcano and that came to the surface when Ted's mom suddenly came to visit. This is messy. Then Ted pivots, taking his mom by surprise, and says, Thank you, mom, for the small, silly things you did for me as a kid. You know, like hiding notes in my lunchbox or putting googly eyes on the fruit at the supermarket just to make me laugh. So he goes back to recognizing and honoring that she was battling and that she did her best to cope in the moment and her way of dealing with whatever it is that happened was to pretend it didn't happen and to try and keep him happy and with lots of fun, which was her also her coping mechanism. And he thanks her for that. But he's also desperate for what was missing, the unspoken processing that hadn't happened. Ted shows he noticed her kindness to him as a child, but is frustrated because these little kinds of actions, the googly eyes on the fruit of the supermarket, the little notes in the lunchbox, were covering up the deeper issues not spoken about instead of being additional things. They were kind of the cover-up. And then he says, and swear word again, for not working on yourself. Wow, powerful. Because if you had worked on yourself, managed the mess, we wouldn't have pretended. We would have processed through, and then the little googly eyes on the fruit would have had a different level of meaning. But used as a cover-up, they lost a bit of their imp- impact and their meaning and, their, and because of what was hidden. And he recognizes that because she didn't work on herself, she didn't know how to help him. And she didn't know how to help herself. And, and, and there's a mess. And it's okay to be a mess. And yes, this is years later, and it would have been better to have done this years before. But this is where they're at now. It's a mess. What are they going to do about it? How are they going to manage this mess? So he says the swear word, for, and you know, F you for not working on yourself. Or seeking help after we lost dad. Boom. There's the trauma the loss of their father. So after he died, the mom just didn't know what to do, didn't didn't work on herself, didn't seek the help that she needed and that he needed. And he also says, and for not talking to me about it, you didn't work on yourself, you didn't seek the help that you needed, and you didn't talk to me about it, you just pretended. You just glossed over the whole thing, acting like everything was all right, but it wasn't. That's really messy. And that's okay because that's all she could do in that moment. But if we had tools in our hands that would help us manage our mess and if we validated and made it easier and had better support systems and we knew how to manage our mind and this is why I have written this book and why I do what I do, how to help you help your child clean up their mental mess. I'm telling you, when you work through this, you're going to be helping yourself deal with stuff. It's, you know, the real simple version of this and the NeuroCycle app that I have. We need to know how to work on ourselves so that we don't pretend that we don't cover up, that we don't eventually have these volcanoes exploding. And when they do explode, which is what they're doing here, we need the tools to be able to resolve them. So let's see what happens. See, this was the mom's coping mechanism because she didn't know what to do and was messy because it impacted Ted, as we see in her words. And she responds to him, I'm sorry, I didn't know what to do, Ted. She acknowledges that she hurt him. She owns it. She owns the impact. She listened. She heard. She tuned in. She empathized. She owned the impact. This is really healthy cleaning up the mental mess. It's owning the mess and it's cleaning up the mental mess. This whole thing is kind of messy and it's okay. But there's an element of managing the mess happening now. So she says, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do, Ted. So I pretended I was okay. She convinced herself that was her coping mechanism. She didn't know what to do, so she pretended she was okay and didn't talk about it. This shows that we as parents need to be authentic about our feelings. If you're grieving a lost spouse, if you're grieving whatever you're grieving, time, animal, spouse, friend, job loss, relationship, 
be authentic, be open. Whatever you're going through, problems at work, problems, obviously within the age range of a child, you're not going to tell every detail. You cannot, you know, there's got to be boundaries. You can't put all your stuff on the child. Your child's not your therapist. What you're doing is you're modeling, you're saying, I am grieving. I'm so sad. I, I don't know how I'm going to cope without that. I, this is what I'm feeling. I, I don't, I, I, it's, it's terrible. And I know you're feeling this and let's cry together and it's terrible. And how are we going to do this? And, you know, going through that little pro, that processing, it's huge together and saying, I'm, I'm going to go to, I'm going to speak to someone. I'm going to get someone to help us. And let's, how do you feel? It, it's getting that out, getting those things out in the open. And I provide, as I said, in, in this book and in, in my other book, I, I provide tools for how you can help yourself. But here I really walk you through how you can help yourself be authentic with your child. And that models for them how they can then be authentic. And then he answers, okay, well, thank you for the apology. And he really means that. He, he sees that she's taken ownership and that's really brought tremendous healing. I mean, it's years later. He's, he's in his 40s and, and this happened when he was a child. So it's been years. But that exchange just doesn't have to be huge exchanges but just that acknowledgement hearing and validating your own mess and the impact started a healing huge healing process so it's acknowledging and respecting her for owning her messiness and the impact on him huge let me say that again he acknowledges and res and has acknowledgement for her and respect for her for owning her messiness and the impact on him and then he says, and he swears again, and if you for making me think I had to pretend as well, because her modeling of pretending was what she basically showed him that he needed to do. And that was the worst thing to do as well. That was messy. She made a mess, but that mess was her coping. She was, it was okay, but it wasn't okay to keep it going because it impacted Ted. So now they can resolve it. But look how it carried over. The message to him was that he did what she did. Let's pretend everything's fine. So he kind of brought that pattern into his life. He would hide when he had deep emotions or was feeling sad. He would hide it behind humor and helping others. And, and it's good to help others. It's great to have humor, but not if it's going to be diverting from... It, it, that's in addition to dealing with yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so he's verbalizing. It's so important. He verbalizes the impact on how her messiness created messiness in him. So we need to have these very hard conversations these things I've done to my four children that I have to acknowledge the messiness in my life and the impact of the messiness on them. But by acknowledging, hearing them, talking it through, we can do a neurocycle, we can process through, we can work through it, we can deal with it. Good, so good to finally get this out. And then she answers, all right, Ted, I really appreciate you sharing this with me. And then she says something very profound. Everything's profound here. I just wish you hadn't carried it around for so long. You know, and she feels a tremendous sadness that he's carried this around for so many years. And she sees where it's from because he did what she did. That was what, how she coped. And so she acknowledges that she wished he didn't have to have that burden. So there's empathy, there's caring, there's that love, that healing love coming in and saying that, I'm so sorry that you carried this around for all these years. That's healing. That's growing together. That's suffering together. That's acknowledging. That's building relationship. That's a deep, meaningful connection. That's messiness in, in, in getting messiness that's, that's getting healed. So mom responds so well, showing how she appreciates how he is sharing and wishes he had not carried it around. This is the messy part because this is what she modeled for him to pretend everything is fine behind the humor. And she says, and you're right, Ted. I do have something to tell you. Because remember in the beginning he said, mom, why are you really here? You know, he knew there was something. And she didn't know how to say it. That's her pattern. Something happens, she knows she needs to say it, she doesn't know how to say it, so she hides behind human cooking meals and being friendly and fun and so on. But after this conversation, she feels she can now share this. She feels that new coping mechanism coming up, which is be honest, be authentic, tell the truth. And she says, your son misses you. And this leads to a very emotional moment where Ted says, I know, and I miss him too. And and he says he's so scared to get close to his son and he puts his hand on his chest like this, showing the intensity of the emotion of missing his child. And, and it's great. He's getting that out. He's, he's acknowledging this deep pain he feels. And he's also so scared. He says he's so scared to get close to that little boy because I know he's going to leave. You see, his dad left. His wife, him and his wife are divorced. His child's going to leave. So there's this pattern of maybe people are going to leave. I'm too scared to get too close. I'm going to hide. I'm going to pretend. So this is a whole new thing opening up for Ted, which is also really messy, but it's very healthy mess. Ted, only the messiness 
if he, of the fear he, uh, the fear he has that his son will leave like his dad and his wife, ex, ex-wife, and he had to pretend it was all okay, and the trauma of losing his dad and the divorce and all this son not being there and being with his son all caught up with him. But his work, he's now the discussion has opened and now healing can begin. It's still going to be very messy. There's still going to be a lot of ups and downs, but the process has begun. And that's what we need to be as parents. This is the thing about, then she says something very profound that I love. It really helped me. It said, she turns to Ted and she said, you know, Ted, the thing about parenting or about being a parent, sometimes you lose and sometimes you win, but most of the time you just tie. She's using the analogy, obviously, of a game with him being a coach. And she says, all we can do is keep playing. So sometimes you're going to be messy, sometimes you aren't. Sometimes you're going to clean up the mess quickly, sometimes you're going to take a long time to clean up the mess. Sometimes you just kind of make it through the mess, but you're going to keep playing. And part of that playing is allowing yourself to accept that parenting is messy. And when you do that, you can be set free to step into a whole new level of relationship with yourself and with your children. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. All we can do is keep playing. Remember, you are someone's daughter. You are someone's son. Your parents were someone's daughter and son. They parented with their baggage and they were parented with their parents' baggage and you parenting with your baggage. It's messy. But if we can observe ourselves, if we can be authentic, if we can notice and create the environment where we can talk about our messiness, then we can work through our messiness. So the messiness doesn't have to get accelerate and get bigger and bigger, we can deal with one mess so that we're ready for the next mess. Because of the impact of parents' baggage coming down and impacting us, we need to remember that when we work on our stuff, we're not dishonoring our parent. So by Ted working on his stuff and saying these things, he's not dishonoring her. He's basically honoring her story, recognizing she was traumatized by the loss of her husband and did not know how to deal with it and did not know how to work on herself and did the best she could under those circumstances, but it did impact him. So that's like all of us. We can honor our parents' story. We can honor our own story. But we we also allow to work on the impact of our parenting on ourselves, as do our children have the right to work on the impact of our parenting on, on them. And we can do this together. We can get in this mess together and try and clean up the mess together. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you haven't already pre-ordered, you can go to the link and you can pre-order. There's some amazing bonuses to help you help your child clean up their mental mess, like a webinar for going back to school and getting ready for that messiness. And and, um, great, you'll see Brainy over here, which is the toy that we've created, which is the little superhero that helps you walk the mental health journey with your child. You'll see Brainy in cartoon form throughout this book. And we have a coloring book where your child can color in and talk about these things that they're going through. So here is a toolkit to help you process the grief, the trauma, the whatever you're going through in your life. Here's a way to help you help yourself and your children work through the mess. Thanks for joining me today.